My journey as a comic book writer began when I won a Marvel Comics talent search contest in, in 2001, which was this weird kind of random fluky thing that Marvel had never really done before, they haven't really done since, so I kind of got lucky in that moment. But it was very much a path I'd been on since I was a kid. You know, I, I remember um, saying as a, as a kid that I wanted to write comics someday um, because I'd become such a huge fan. Never stopped reading, never gave up on that idea. I had no idea how to even begin to you know, reach for a career in comics um, as a kid growing up in a small town and in the days before the internet where you kind of had to live in New York City to even, you know, have a chance of breaking in. So it took me until that, that um, you know, talent search con contest kind of fell out of the blue um, before I was able to get my foot in the door. But I spent all that time, all those years writing, reading comics, um, you know, working on my craft, just hoping someday I'd, I'd get the chance so that when I did, I was able, you know, to, to step up and take advantage of it and kind of, kind of never look back. I've, I've really been working at Marvel ever since. I think the first time I came across Thor as a fan, as a reader, was um, plucking an, uh, an issue of the Walt Simonson run off the spinner rack, you know, like the drugstore spinner rack um, when I was a kid. When Walt first took over the book, he did the Beta Ray Bill story, which is Beta Ray Bill is this weird horse-faced alien who found the hammer of Thor and picked it up and was transformed into a version of, of Thor. Um, and that, that idea, um, which was you know something that kind of goes back to the beginning of the character as set up by Stan and Jack, that idea of transformation and the inscription on that hammer that was very much something that was you know at the heart of my run in particular the, the jane foster part of it the, i think the, the new movie is using a lot of my stuff so i think we haven't seen as much of that in the previous thor movies you know and they sort of take from um uh, different parts of my run on thor i was on thor for seven years and 101 issues and this this film takes the bad guy from the first arc uh, that I did on the book, uh, Gore the God Butcher, and then they take um, Jane Foster as Thor, which was kind of the middle chunk of my run on the on the book, and they combine those to get together, and you know, and in, in the um, usual Taika Waititi style. So it's it's fun, it's dark, um, and then there's a lot of real heart to it as well. I, I think Thor is kind of unique within the the Marvel catalog of characters, you know, that's kind of the way Stan and Jack created him is they wanted a character who was different from Spider-Man, Cap, the, the FF, all those guys. So what makes Thor different is he's a god, right? Like he's been around for hundreds, thousands of years. Um, so that creates a completely different kind of palette for stories than, you know, just Spider-Man swinging through Queens or, or you know, or even Captain America who, who's been around since World War II. With, with Thor, you can do stories that stretch across, you know, eons. And you have a guy who's, his beat, you know, the beat he walks as a hero includes all these you know, mystical realms, you know, spread along the world tree. So you can do Thor, stories with Thor that you can't do with any other Marvel character. Are you worthy enough to pick up Thor's hand? <laughs> I don't know, I, I guess I'm worthy enough to pick up Thor's hammer because I do have probably a dozen hammers scattered about my house at the moment. So I do pick them up on a regular occasion from, you know, tiny tiny ones to, to big ones to the Thor toolbox. Like they're, they're kind of all over the place. <laughs>